Hey everyone, this is Natty Kay. So I tried to record this audio while recording the video, but unfortunately my computer decided to be a dum-dum and crashed the audio recorder about halfway through, so alas, I have to re-record. On the bright side, this means I'll be able to use a script so it won't be so awkwardly rambly, but it also means that what I'm saying and what's happening on screen may not always sync quite right. I'll do my best to edit it smoothly, but just a heads up. So anyways, a few people have been asking me about how I do my digital line art and coloring. It's a bit hard to explain over text, so I decided to make a video tutorial. Now, to be clear, there are many many different ways one can go about inking and coloring a piece, and none is necessarily more correct than another. This is simply my preferred way of doing it that I've developed over some years of trial and error, and it works for me. But don't feel like you have to do it my way if there's a different technique that works better for you. So without further ado, here's my technique. First, of course, you need to open up your drawing program of choice. Personally, I use a mixture of Photoshop Elements and Metabang Paint Pro, the latter being free to download online. Photoshop has better editing tools, but Metabang has a really nifty thing called Correction, or Pen Stabilizer. And when using that, it can make a much cleaner, crisper lines than Photoshop can. Therefore, I use Metabang for anything requiring a hard edge, such as line art or cell shading, while I do more effectsy stuff in Photoshop. Don't fret if you can't use these programs, though. This technique should be doable in any program that supports layers. Now, of course, you need a sketch. You can sketch directly into the program or import it from elsewhere, like a scanner or even your phone camera. The image doesn't need to be super high quality, so long as it's not skewed and you can see it clearly. In this case, I just used my phone to take a picture of a doodle from my sketchbook. Now you need to make sure your image is at a high enough resolution to be inked. You're probably going to want it to be at least around 2000 by 2000 pixels and 300 dpi. If it's smaller than this, be sure to resize it before inking. Remember, the sketch is only temporary, so it doesn't matter if it gets a bit fuzzy or pixelated by making it bigger. Once your image is correctly sized, create two new layers, one above the sketch and one below it. Make sure the one below it is a solid neutral color, like white or gray, and leave the one above it transparent. This will be your line art layer. Lower the opacity of the sketch layer so it's pale. This will make your lines easier to see as you ink it. Now let's start inking. Set correction to 19, choose a brush size, and start tracing the outline of your sketch on your new line art layer. Ah, there we go. Now that we have the line art, it's time to prep for coloring. Take the magic wand tool and select everything in the negative space, then inverse it by going to select inverse. Why start with the negative space and inverse it? Because starting with a positive space means this. Which is more of a hassle and won't give you as clean a silhouette. Once you have your selection, create a new layer under the line art layer. Hide the line art layer and fill in the new layer with a light gray. Deselect and unhide the line art. Now we have a line art layer and a color layer. Keep these separate until you're completely done coloring. Now we'll take the image into Photoshop. Not technically necessary, you can do this in any program, it's just a forced habit for me, to clean up our color layer a bit. Make the background a neutral gray if it wasn't already, and lock the transparency of the line art layer. Some programs will call this Protect Alpha. Locking the transparency will allow you to only color the part of the layer that already has something on it. Take a slightly darker gray than the color layer and color over the line art. This will make the messy bits a bit easier to see. See these little artifacts around the edges? That's what we're cleaning up. This side effect of using selection to get your base is a bit of a nuisance, but in my opinion it beats having to fill in the base manually, as you'll still have to get up along the lines either way. Now that we've gone all the way around the image and cleaned it up, we can turn the line art color back to black. This is how we'll want it when we start coloring. Lock the transparency of the color layer and start adding your colors. Flat fill colors I'll do in Photoshop, but if a character has unlined patterns or markings, I'll go back to Metabang so I can use the pen stabilizer. For example, Tiki here has black spots on her face, so we'll bring her back to Metabang. I do things like irises, eye shine, and cell shading in Metabang as well. Now we have our characters all nice and colored. But wait, we're not done yet. We still have to color the line art. Let's go back to Photoshop. Make sure the transparency of your line art layer is still locked, and then select the character's color. Pick a slightly darker shade and start coloring the lines. This part of the technique can be a bit tricky for dark characters like Plaid. There's two ways you can go about it. One is to use a lighter color for the lines rather than a darker color. This works fairly well with small bits, like a person with black hair. 
but I find that it can look messy if used for the whole body, like an animal with black fur. The second is just to use as dark a color as you can without using pure black. Never use pure black for the outlines if you can help it. It's not too big a deal for a flat color, but if you start adding effects on top of your characters, it can become painfully obvious and not so nice looking. We're probably going to use the second option. And voila! Once you're done cleaning up the colored lines, you're all set. Your characters are all colored and ready to be shaded, which I will not cover in this tutorial, but maybe in the future if y'all want to see it. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and happy drawing!